It's making me salivate a lot. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me. Today, we are going to be talking about games on the Nintendo Switch Online service that were published originally in the year 1991. Mostly. I am going to be including some things that were published a little earlier or later, but for the most part, I am going for the original release date of each of these games. When you look at the info on the Nintendo Switch Online for each of these individual games, they may list a published date other than the one I'm going to be listing. Often that's because the Japanese release date is earlier, so I'm going to be going by that. Also, a few of these were originally arcade games, so I'm going to be listing the arcade release when I can, but in some cases, the home console release after it was released for arcades was in 1991. I'll be organizing all of these by console, starting with the NES. I really like the idea of using race winnings to fix up your boat when you use it again on another race, but this game really does not go easy on you in the early races, even on easy mode. And this game has so many bikinied women. If you are a big race fan aficionado, give this one a check out. This is not the type of game that you should purchase a Nintendo Online subscription for. This was originally on the Famicom Disk System in 1987, but it did eventually make its way to the NES in 1991. My dad was really into this game. I kind of hate golf games. It's really not that bad, it's just a little frustrating, and if you're into golf games, give this one a shot. I'm kind of intrigued by this game. This is part shmup, part platformer, with anime or manga-inspired cutscenes. I absolutely cannot figure out the plot, though. This game was also released on the Game Boy. This is a cute and simple puzzle game. It's fun, but it gets old fast. High scores don't really compel me, and this isn't as interesting as Tetris or Dr. Mario. Next, we're moving on to the Game Boy. Burger Time was a 1982 arcade game that was eventually released on home computers and the NES. Burger Time Deluxe is essentially the same game, and it was released on the Game Boy in 1991. It's fine. The jumping in this game is a bit stiff, but this game actually might be easier than any of the other Metroid games that I've played. I like getting a hint that a Metroid might be nearby when you see its eggshell, and you're left with the anticipation of wondering when it might attack. The music is mixed. Some of it is great, but some of it is maybe a little too active for a Metroid game, in my opinion. I like my Metroid soundtracks sparse. The spider ball power-up is really fun to play with, and I love that I found a Metroid while just messing around with this. This game I was having a lot of fun with until I got completely lost. Your results are hopefully going to be better than mine. This is a game definitely worth checking out. Now moving on to the Genesis. If you liked Golden Axe, this is more of the same. I guess maybe slightly better, but really just more of the same. It's really interesting, but it's a brand of 90s cool that doesn't really work for me, and it's so slow. But I do find it sort of fascinating how much of this is procedurally generated, and it's a fairly relaxed game. This was released in arcades in 1989, and this is the All Your Base Are Belong To Us game. It's a very pretty game, but I'm bad at shmups, so it's a bit too hard for me. But it's worth checking it out, at least to live your memeing life and watch that opening cut sequence. Now moving on to the SNES. Earth Defense Force was originally an arcade game as well. The opening credits in this are stunningly gorgeous. 
It's a very pretty game, but it's a rather typical shmup, and it's difficult. Joe and Mac was also originally an arcade game. It's very okay. If you like action jumping platformers, give this one a shot. I've already covered this one on the channel, link to the video up in the corner there. But if you've not played this before, you absolutely need to. Luckily, there are lots of other ways to play this game without having to pay for the Nintendo Online subscription. But if you've already got it, here's a good option for you. This was also released on the Game Boy. It's very cute, but I don't completely get it. It's a puzzle platformer where you're juggling bubbles and trying to get fruit. I'm, I'm a little confused by this one. I'm sorry, baseball is so boring. This was also on the GBA. It's a really cute game, but it's slow and it's very difficult. But as with all of the other games in this series, I really love the way that it shows how you've been damaged by full suit of armor first going to your undies and then one more hit and you're dead. I think it's really cute. This was originally a PC Engine CD-ROM game, but it was also released on the SNES and eventually then the Switch. The graphics are okay. Uh, it's nice that it has a female lead character. Otherwise, it's pretty meh, to be honest. Again, this is another character action platformer. If you're into that, give it a shot. And with all of these games, really, if you've already got the subscription to the service, try them all. Who knows, you might like something way more than I do. But if you don't already have the service, I think the one of these that is the most exciting is The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, but there are other ways to play that. So with that, enjoy your games. Maintain your groovy selves.